How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Listen, last winter I posted a video listing items that you can carry on your sled to keep yourself safe and warm if you break down out on the trail. I also asked you guys what you carried. I thought I'd take some time out and respond to your comments. All right, now just before I get to that, let me talk a little bit about where I am. So I'm up in District 9 up on the Bruce Peninsula. If you don't know where that is, I'm right dead in the middle between Georgian Bay on one side and Lake Huron on the other. About three hours north of Toronto. If you're looking for somewhere to ride this winter, come up here. These trails are amazing. So I thought we'd, uh, we'd head out and give you a look at the trails and we'll talk about some of the things that you bring on your sled. So first question, uh, Aiden Nina and uh, Ryber Gizen Gaming. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Pick an easier name. Um, Aiden and Gaming said, a knife is handy to have. I do actually always carry a knife out on the trail. And I didn't mention it in that video, so I apologize for that. And obviously a knife is really handy to have. You can use it for a lot of different things. But the question did start me thinking. I'm not a survival expert, and I know a lot of you guys are, are really serious about uh, survival and bushcraft. But uh, I did do a little bit of research. and. I mean, some people are really, really serious about knives, right? And uh, you can spend hundreds of dollars on a knife, and it's probably money well spent if you spend a lot of time out in the bush. But again, you do want to have a knife on your sled, and there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when picking a knife for survival purposes. So the first thing is you don't want a hinged blade knife like this. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. It's got a hinge in the middle, and that can fail, right? So it can break, the bolt can come loose, whatever. And if that happens while you're using it, then obviously you can really cut yourself, uh, and you end up with a knife that's useless. So that really isn't the ideal. Now really, the best survival knife is the one you have on you so any knife is better than no knife but you know you really want to have a fixed blade like this one the other thing you want to look for is something with a full tang right so where the piece of metal that uh, the blade is made out of extends all the way to the end of the handle it just makes for a stronger knife right the other thing is the length of the knife so you know four to six inches is a good length if you have something that's too small you can't use it for things like chopping or splitting wood if you have something that's too long you can't use it for fine work so like if you're if you're into bushcraft and you're into setting snares like that or if you want to strip wire or anything if you have a big huge honking bowie knife it's not good so the next comment was from john lynch so john is apparently getting plenty of fiber in his diet uh the first thing that he recommended is lots of toilet paper and <laughs> that's actually one of those things that uh when you need it you'll be really glad you have it the other thing that uh, john pointed out was the water bottle so in my previous video i did talk about uh, having water so you can stay hydrated and he mentioned that you should have a metal water bottle bottle uh, and the reason for that would be that you could boil some water if your water bottle froze John that's a great idea so I did go out and buy one okay the other thing that John pointed out was uh, to bring sunglasses so you don't go snow blind and John that is a really great idea as well now the reason I didn't mention it I typically use um, a skidoo modular helmet that has an integrated glare shield and I wear prescription glasses so uh, I typically use that if, the, if I find the Sun a little bit too bright but still you're not always on your sled so that is a great idea to make sure you bring some sunglasses Okay, next up is Scott Patterson, and Scott Patterson always carries Gorilla Tape, and this is an awesome idea. You never know when you're going to run into a gorilla on the trail and need to tape it. So, uh, Gorilla Tape, <laughs> actually, um, Gorilla Tape is a really good idea, uh, Scott, thanks very much. A lot of guys will carry duct tape as well. Obviously, you can use this for a ton of different things, obviously, uh, small repairs on your sled. Gorilla Tape, great idea. All right, Scott also says, do you use a hel heated helmet visor? No, I do not, but he does have a really good point. If yes, then a spare RCA cord for that is a must. So the cord to plug it into the heating, I actually do have a an outlet to plug a heated visor into, but um, I currently don't use a heated visor. I just, like I said, I use the Skidoo Modular, um, but that is a great tip. He also says, carry a spare set of goggles in case something bad happens to your visor. He also rides thousands of miles solo, but even when he's out riding with his wife, he carries a spot device. So uh, he's talking about a personal locator and I'm actually going to talk more to that in a future video so stay tuned but that is a great idea uh, and spare fuses and relays mold man 102 always carries rope on board it is great for starting fires and it helps you to make a shelter 
Okay, next up is Owen Longhorn. Now, Owen actually made a really good suggestion, and that is zip ties. Now, zip ties are really, really handy. I usually keep these on my boat, my sailboat, because you can use them for a ton of different things. So I've actually even seen guys repair the fiberglass, like the belly pan and things like that, uh, holding them together with these. So, Owen, that is an awesome idea. Actually, this isn't about something to carry on your, your sled, but he also has a really great tip, and that's if you are broken down and you need to pull your sled to remove the drive belt. And Owen, oh, that's, a, that's a great idea. All right, next up is Pasty Boy. Now, Pasty Boy, if you haven't seen his channel, um, he's another YouTuber. He does some really good snowmobiling videos, and he rubs in the fact that he has a GPS on his brand new snowmobile. Thanks, Pasty Boy. And the GPS actually is a fabulous thing to have. Um, I do have a Garmin GPS, and I'm going to be doing a future video on mapping and navigation and uh, wiring and outlet for uh, the Garmin, so stay tuned for that. But yes, the GPS is absolutely a fantastic thing to have. You can easily get out here. There are thousands of kilometers of trails out here and it's easy to get lost. Perfect idea, pasty boy. All right, guys, Colin 22 Hockey makes a really good point. He says, aspirin is good to have if someone has a heart attack. Um, Colin, that's a great point. And I kind of thought a little bit about how to address this because I am not dispensing medical advice. Always best to seek out a qualified medical professional or a pharmacist. But that said, yes, you do read a lot of sources that aspirin can be used if you're having a heart attack. So yes, Colin, I do always carry aspirin in my first aid kit. So a heart attack happens when the vessels that supply blood to your heart get blocked or occluded, right? And aspirin's a blood thinner. So if you're out and you're exerting yourself in the cold, then if you're already predisposed for a heart attack, then that could bring one on. That's why you, you know, you hear about people when they're shoveling snow having a heart attack. So if you or somebody in your party is having a heart attack, or you think they might be, so maybe they have pain in their chest, especially if it's different to their shoulder or their jaw, um, they're pale, they're short of breath, they're sweaty. Um, so if, if you think you're having a heart attack, the very first thing you should do is call 911, right? Do not pop an aspirin and hope it goes away. But when you call 911, they may suggest that you chew an aspirin, so it is a good idea to have one in your kit. The other thing that I think would be a good piece of advice is if you spend a lot of time way out in the bush away from help or if you frequently lead groups of snowmobilers, get in touch with somebody like St. John's Ambulance and take a first aid or a CPR course. It might be the difference between a close call and a really sad day. So call in great point. Um, now the other thing Aiden Nina pointed out was you forgot the most important thing for snowmobiling near water, ice pick for pulling yourself out of the water. Aiden, that's a good point. And I didn't technically forget it. I usually don't carry them, or I didn't carry them. But I actually did go out and buy everything that you guys suggested. So, here's the deal with these things. Now, these ones are actually called safety spikes. I actually, when I started to look for ice pick, I got the typical mobster weapon <laughs> ice pick, and I was having a hard time finding these. Uh, when I searched for ice claws, you guys, as a piece of advice, uh, when I searched for ice claws, I found a ton of them. And a great place to get these is places that sell um, ice fishing equipment. All right, so the reason that I don't typically carry these is because I never drive my snowmobile on the ice. There's a couple of reasons for that. Mostly, I have, like I said, thousands of miles of trails that I can ride on, and that's fine for me. I also think that staying off the ice, to me anyway, is safe. Like, I think you're not going to go through the ice if you're not riding on the ice. So that's kind of why I didn't have a pair of these. But that said, these are a really, really important piece of equipment for a snowmobiler to have because you never know if you're out and, you know, you're way out on the trail and you end up, you do have to cross some water. You know, A, you always want to make sure that you've got thick enough ice to ride on. I think it's a good six inches, but I will double check. And if I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen for you. Um, but you want to make sure that the ice is thick enough to support your snowmobile when you ride on it. Be really careful. I don't know how many times through the winter I hear about snowmobilers going through the ice. The other thing, as Aiden pointed out, is to have a pair of these on you. Now these, they're inexpensive. Um, these are from Rapala. There's a number of different brands. There's some, these ones, they lock together and they are... You can wear them around your neck, right? Um, and these ones lock together, which is kind of cool. And you just tuck them inside your jacket and they're there if you need them. So all of the ones that I've seen float. Um, I like these ones because they've got a hand grip so they're going to be easy to hold. And basically, if you go through the ice, the spikes on these will help you get back out. So this is another one of those things where it's better to have it and never need it than really need it and wish you had it, okay? So um, they're inexpensive, they're really easy to carry with you on the sled, and Aiden, I absolutely agree with you, that is a fantastic idea to carry on your sled. Thank you so much, guys, for posting all of your comments. It really makes the channel a whole lot more fun for me when it's been interactive. It is social media, after all. Um, the, you know, when I'm posting content, it's typically, it's my experience or things other riders have shared with me. It's not always the only way to do things, so you guys have a ton of great ideas as well. So thanks again for all of your comments and suggestions. Until next time, I'm Dave Clark, and Thanks for watching.